Morning folks, I'm going to do a quick video today on replacing the struts on the Copart project car. Um, I've got the um, struts that were supposed to go on the front of uh, the uh, silver car. And since we can't use them anymore, um, I'm going to go ahead and, and put them on this car. Anyhow, um, I'm going to set you up on a tripod. It should go pretty easy. Um, I had actually tried putting these struts on... Uh, um, Iris the other day because Iris needs uh, new struts and I found out that uh, the fronts are very specific as far as the wheel size um, the struts that I have are only for 16 and 17 inch wheels um, 18 inch wheels take a different strut so um, they were rubbing the tires on Iris were rubbing on the strut tower here so these should fit fine on the front of Black Beauty and uh, we're going to go ahead and throw them on there since I really have nothing else to do with them and uh, Black, Be Bleh, Black Beauty could probably use a new set of struts in front. So we're going to go ahead and throw them on. I'm going to put you on the tripod, and uh, you can just follow along. I'll only show one side because the other side is just uh, a, a repeat of this side. So hang on, let me get you on the tripod, and we'll, uh, we'll take this step by step. This I'm, I'm going to do a step by step because this should actually be fairly decent. I've had the strut on and off of this several times when I was doing the front suspension, so I'm actually uh, pretty good at, at this one, so it shouldn't take too much. Um, anyhow, hang on, I'll be right with you. Right. First thing we're gonna do is zip this tire off of here. Be using the old Cobalt 24 volt cordless impact wrench. This thing is awesome. Lots of torque, the battery lasts forever, and um, I haven't even tried, I don't think I've charged the battery on this once and I've had it like three or four months and I've used it on all kinds of suspension work on this car. So, Cobalt, not a sponsor, um, but man, if you go to Lowe's and pick one of these up, uh, the, their whole line of Cobalt 24 volt tools are, are really good. Uh, the, the batteries are fairly inexpensive um, compared to others. And they do a really great job. So anyhow, there's there's my shameless plug for Cobalt, and uh, we're going to get this tire off. we're going to do is going to, uh, you guys, uh, see if I can get you in here a little bit. And the next thing we're going to do is, uh, uh we're going to loosen that sway bar link down there. We're not going to take it completely off, but we're going to loosen it to the point that the nut is still on the threads. We're talking about that right there. Um, we're gonna get that buzzed off and that'll allow the uh, lower control arm uh, to move up and down a little bit. And then uh, we'll start uh, taking the uh, fasteners for the, uh, the strut off. So, okay, hang on. Fasteners on these uh, replacement uh, sway bar links that I uh, put on here are 14 millimeter. Um, some can be as big as a 17 millimeter. I guess it just depends. Um, your mileage may vary, but these are 14, so I'm going to do this kind of unconventionally because it's easier just using the power equipment to get these off of here or get them loosened up. As soon as I get this socket on there, so I'm going to reach, go from underneath with the power or with the uh, cordless uh, impact and then hold the nut from the top. And like I said, I'm not going all the way, I'm just uh, loosening them up. So we're going to leave the nut on there because <clears throat> one, it, ma it makes it easier to uh, makes it easier to get the uh, get it back tight. Now, if, if you take the nut all the way off, that control arm drops, and then you have problems squeezing that back up together to get that nut back on there. So if you leave the nut on, you don't have any of that problem, and it does give you enough play 
that you can um, lower this down and manipulate this to get the, the strut done. Next thing we're going to do is buzz these two 21 millimeter nuts off the uh, lower strut mount here. The, uh, these bolts have um, grooves cut in them that lock into the, the steering knuckle. So you don't need anything on the back side here, nothing to hold them. You just buzz them off. Uh, like I said, power tools are our better choice, so and it goes really quick. And we get our big BFH and you tap the uh, bolts out. I usually like to start with the lower one first. And when they go flying, you got it out. As you can see, hopefully is this in frame? Yeah, that's in frame. You can see the striations or the, the grooves cut in here. That's what locks into the, the steering knuckle. And that's why you don't have to have any kind of uh, fastener or any kind of wrench on the other end. Um, they've also give you uh, a little room at the tip to uh, apply some hammer force with it without messing up the threads. So, like I said, you can see that was kind of mushroomed. These things have been in and out of here a couple times when I was messing with the suspension on this front end. So, success. Then we're gonna go up top and. Um, take you up here with me. There's three 15 millimeter bolts holding the top of the strut on. There. These three right here. So we'll buzz those off and uh, we'll get the, the strut out of there. That's how easy those came off. And simply pull this out like that. And out it comes. And as you can see, this thing has seen better days. A lot of rust and rust jacking out from underneath it. Um, I, I mean, they're not horrible. Actually, the ones on my wife's car are actually in worse shape. The boots are split. But... The, uh, the pistons in these are, are shot. We get getting a lot of bounce with it, so it's time to replace them. And like I said, since, I mean, they, they could have gone longer. They really could have. Um, if I hadn't had these other ones ready to go in this, I probably wouldn't do this. Uh, so, like I said, um, it's going to get the benefit of some new, uh, new struts simply because of the the damage to the A pillar on the silver car uh, just turned that into a junker. So, anyhow, um, we got the other one, the new one right here. This is the new one by Detroit Axle, and uh, all shiny and clean, ready to go in. And and the installation is just the opposite of uh, of taking it out. We're gonna stick it up in the hole there. We'll get these nuts on top of it to hold it up there and then we'll get the the steering knuckle inside the groove down here get these all tightened up here up here's the be zapped and just to kind of hold it up. and then uh, we'll get the proper torque on those after we get the lowers installed here see the magnets on, on that need to be upgraded. All right, then uh, what we're going to do is get this loaded back in here. Now this can be kind of problematic trying to get these lined up. Just got to do the best you can.
This is usually where the swearing begins. Got the lower one in. It's just a matter of getting that spooged up there. All zippy zap, and then uh, we're good. We're gonna put the the nuts on there, or that'll draw those bolts through. Um, and then we'll uh, tighten down our um, sway bar link. And we'll tighten up all the bolts, and essentially that's it. Um, that's all she wrote. Um, so, a little tray around here. And really, all you got to do is get it to where the threads are poking through, because the the nuts will uh, will draw the bolts into the joint. And. she wrote. And we'll get our 14 millimeter socket back on here and tighten up that uh, tighten up that sway bar link. sway bar links you just want to compress them to where the uh, the bushing the rubber bushing is about compressed out to the size of the washer no need to get all gorilla on them um, so yeah that's it I'll put the, the tire on and uh, we're gonna tighten up our bolts on the top here
snug these up with the impact and then we'll get the torque wrench out and torque them to factory spec which is 100 foot pounds. <laughs> Get it off the jack stand and lower it down and torque the uh, lug nuts and we'll be good. You can see that there's plenty of space between the tire and this um, lower spring support. Um, when on Iris, these are 16 inch wheels, Iris has 18 inch wheels and you can see there's not two inches of space here and Iris's tires were rubbing right along here so um, we had to pull them back off. So. Anyhow, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop her there. I won't bore you with lowering the car down and torquing the, um, torquing the lug nuts. But that's how you change a strut on a 2008 Chevrolet Impala. This is the same procedure any, anywhere from uh, 2006 to 2013. Um, and it's the same procedure on a ton of cars out there like the Oldsmobile Intrigue, uh, the Pontiac G6. Um, there's a ton of the Monte Carlos. There's a ton of cars with this type of front end the, the same get up um and it's the same procedure for for pretty much all of them thanks so. for tuning in uh, we'll see you on the next one the next thing for this is i'm going to swap doors on this with the parts car and um that way we're going to get rid of all these little paint chips i will peel the um the body side moldings off of the car off of this car and we'll reattach them to the doors on the um on the parts car and that will maintain the original lt look and we'll have some doors that don't need paint and that will actually match the other paint here. So anyhow, thanks for coming along. We'll see you on the next one. Okay, a little bit of bonus footage. Um, I'm starting to swap the tires over and I, I'm kind of halfway. So I wanted to have you to take a look and eh, maybe this isn't the best side to look at. Um, let's go over here to the other side of this car. I actually like the look of the steel wheels with the hubcaps better than I like the, uh, the aluminum alloys. Can you take a look and let me know what you think. This is a, the parts car because um, it's out in the sunlight. I get a little bit better exposure than in the garage. We can take a look at the, the actual car in the garage. But I don't know. I mean, I kind of like the, the steelies with the hubcaps better than I like the aluminums. Take a look up here. That's the good focal point. Yeah, well, tell me what you think. Leave some comments down in the comment box. Tell me what you think. Um, we're going to swap them over. Uh, uh, you know, the like I said, the, the cost of tires um, it makes it well worth the swap, but I actually kind of like the, uh, the steelies with the hubcaps look a little bit better. I never have been a fan of these alloys. Now, if they were these alloys, that would be a different story. The five spokers or the actually ten spokers, I like those aluminum alloys. I like those aluminum wheels. Um, these solid ones, I'm not too hot about. So, like I said, we're going to switch them out just for the better set of tires. Um, I think it'll look just as good, if not better. Uh, in my opinion, like I said, the Steelys with the hubcaps look better. So, a little bit of bonus footage for you. And then uh, we're going to have another video of me. Uh, we're going to swap these two doors for those two doors. And then um, two things will happen is that uh, the pinstriping will match. We won't have this gap in the pinstriping and it will fix all of this paint chip rust problem that we have on the driver's door. And the ding on the passenger door and the damage to the passenger door down here. So that'll fix those two things relatively easily and the paint will match the fender and the hood and all this side of the car and then uh, we'll have the body work back here to blend in and uh, if we have to redo this little portion of pinstripe so be it because i'll be painting back here we'll probably go ahead and remove this uh, pinstripe and redo it 
uh, when we paint this uh, quarter panel back here. So that's the plan. Um, that's better than kind of redoing the whole pinstriping on the side of the car because I do like the look of the pinstriping. We will be taking these body side moldings off um, these doors and putting them on those other doors since they don't have them. And um, I think they just, they three M adhesive them on, you get them off a fishing line. So I think that'll be okay. So anyhow, there's the bonus footage. We'll see you on the next video. Thanks for tuning in. Hit the like button or the dislike button. Uh, leave a comment down below. Tell me what you liked or disliked and uh, be sure to subscribe to my channel and the notifications to get uh, further updates. Thanks. Have a great day. Okay, bonus, bonus footage. Um, I'm going to take the project car here for a little rip. See how we did with the uh, strut and the tire replacement. Um, I did adjust the suspension. Um, when I put the front suspension together, I don't remember whether I put it in its position of function before I tightened up the suspension bolts, which you're really supposed to do. Um, so I loosened everything up put it in the proper position, torqued everything back to factory spec, and um, I'm hoping that'll, I'm hoping that I didn't <laughs> make a mistake before, but if I did and it fixes the problem, that's great. But we also have new tires and new front struts, so there's a couple things thrown in the equation there. Um, so I'm gonna take it for a little rip up and down the street. Uh, there's plenty of bumps on my street to uh, um, test the um the theories here so anyhow hang on i'm gonna turn you around facing the other way Kind of a slalom course here. I've got cars everywhere, Impalas everywhere. All right, so there we have all four Impalas that I own. One we're in, there's Iris, there's the parts car, and well, there's the parts car under the tarp. I guess it's a parts car now. Anyhow, I digress. All right, here we go. Back out onto the street. Yep, that seemed to have fixed the problem. I don't know what part fixed it. I don't know that I really care, but um, other than I do have an alignment issue, which I knew I would because you can see the steering wheel is kind of cocked to the left. Um, I had that suspension completely apart. I'm sure the tow-in angles and the caster and camper angles and the front and back are all wonky, but this thing, when it used to hit these bumps, would kind of make this veering thing, and uh, it doesn't do that anymore. So, I'm thinking it was the struts. I really do. But it could have been the suspension, too. Could have been the tires. I don't know. Could have been any of it. Anyhow, so, once we get the uh, alignment done, the ride issues with this car will be solved. Somebody's going to get themselves a nice run and driving car. It feels nice and smooth and solid on the road now. Other than, like I said, this little pull to the right, which we will fix within an alignment. I think I just found my draining battery problem. I noticed the dome light was on. There, turn that around. The dome light. 
up there in the ceiling was like that. Turned the switch on the dashboard and now it's back off. So might have found my battery drain problem. Fixing all kinds of things here today. Alright, so we got some bonus test drive footage. And boy, she feels a lot better. A lot better. As we pull up on Junker and Palaville, minus one very nice. pull this back in the garage and like I said earlier the next step is going to be swapping doors there you can see the parts car has the alloys on it and I don't know that it'll go to the junkyard with those alloys on it I might just start collecting spare tires and and run it to the junkyard on spares or broken tires or or something whoa darkness lightness anyhow thanks for tuning in again and uh, we'll catch you on the next video which will be swapping of the doors have a great day